William Brian Jennings was a top executive at Morgan Stanley. And a little over a year ago, he uh, was at a Christmas party and he wound up uh, getting uh, quite inebriated. That's what it looks like. Uh, he admitted to the cops that he'd been drinking throughout the day. But he says, no, 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 I wasn't too intoxicated. Trust me. Okay. He, uh, his car service didn't show up to take him back to his $3.4 million home in Connecticut. Oh, poor baby. Okay, it happened. So he took a cab. Normal, right? Now, when they get to the home, they have a dispute about how much the fare should be. Now, both sides have different uh, views on this. The cabbie says, look, it's $204. That's what I charged. That's what it was. And the guy is drunk and says, no, I only want to pay you 50 bucks. To drive you from the middle of Manhattan all the way into Connecticut, 50 bucks. Now, look, it could have been the dispute. Could, could, the guy says, no, no, no. He wanted nearly 300 and I wanted to give him 200 and we had a dispute over it. Now, you believe whoever you want on that, because that's not an important part of the story. Okay? Even if you disbelieve the cabbie on that, what's, uh, what happened next is much more important. So the cabbie says, okay, no problem. We have a dispute here. Let me just drive to the local police station, and we can figure out who's right and who's wrong. Right? So now, if you're in the right, you shouldn't mind, right? And the guy says, oh, I, th I was worried that the cabbie was kidnapping me or something. Oh, okay, well, then you'd love it if you drove you to the police. I mean, who kidnaps somebody and drives them to the police? Right? So that should be terrific. No, that's not what he does. You know what he does? He takes out a two and a half inch blade and stabs the cabbie. The cabbie says that he was trying to stab him in the neck and he put up his hand and he wound up stabbing him in the hand. Okay? So here is apparently what William Brian Jennings said at the time to the cabbie I'm going to kill you. You should go back to your country. Uh, the cabbie uh, is apparently Egyptian. So a nice little racial slur thrown in there with a death threat. And it's not an empty death threat. He just stabbed the guy. Then uh, the cabbie, Muhammad Amar, says, I felt like I was going to die that night. He tried to stab me in the neck. He also says, Jennings said, the cops wouldn't do anything to him because he pays 10000 in taxes. How true does that ring? This guy feels he's entitled to everything. His salary at Morgan Stanley was over $2 million a year. He's having a, an argument over 50 bucks or 100 bucks on a cab ride, and if it doesn't go his way, what difference does it make? The cops are on my side. I'm the rich guy here. I pay 10000 in taxes. And if it doesn't go my way, I'll stab you. All right? By the way, uh, Morgan Stanley originally suspended him, and he now no longer works there. Wow, they got him. Wait till you find out what the cops did then. When they asked Jennings co-workers, though, at Morgan Stanley, they said, quote, he's one of the nicest guys you'll meet. Maybe in the banking world. <laughs> Maybe in the banking world, that's one of the nicer guys. <laughs> OK, now, what happened? Why am I giving you an update on this story? They're going to drop the charges. Now, he faced five years on two different counts. There was hate crimes. You can have an argument about that. But there was the actual stabbing. He stabbed a guy. He tried to stab him in the neck. Now, that's, look, at the very least, don't you go to trial and find out if this cabbie who got stabbed might be telling the truth? They tr they're going to drop the charges. When they asked the lead detective, Chester Perkowski said, I'm aware that the charges are being dropped. And he had no further comment. Then I thought, hey, maybe they paid off the cabbie to make this thing go away. The guy's incredibly rich. That might make some sense. Nope. Mr. Omar is outraged by the prosecutor's decision and continues to demand justice. He was anxiously awaiting trial this month and had no indication that the prosecutor would take such a drastic turn nearly a year after this crime was committed and within days of the trial. Within days of the trial, they dropped the charges. Why? I mean, look, it was one thing when the bankers got away with the largest financial fraud in American history. It was one thing when we didn't prosecute them for getting away with billions, perhaps trillions of money that they didn't have a right to, that they committed fraud with. It's another thing when they stab people and they still get away with it. Are there no bounds of reason? Or is there nothing a banker can do and not get away with? And gee, I wonder why the American people are angry. I can't quite tell. It'll, is it that we have two sets of laws? One for rich people and for one for the rest of us? 
Of course that's what it is. He's going to come in with his army of lawyers and they're going to make up all these things. Oh, the cabbie said this and he that was inconsistent and this and that. And they're going to try to intimidate everybody into saying, I'm the rich guy here. I pay 10,000 in taxes. I could stab anyone I like. This is grotesque. Steve. I was a prosecutor and I prosecuted cases just like this a number of times. They are never, ever dismissed. Aside from the stabbing, when, when you utter the words, I'm going to kill you, that is construed as a terrorist threat. That is a separate charge, uh, liable for at least another year in, in jail. This guy, if he weren't a banker, if he were an ordinary person, and God forbid if he was a poor person, he would, have, he would be facing anywhere between one to five years and stripped of all rights to vote, uh, to have a job, or anything else going forward. This is disgusting. You think that's bad? Now, do role reversal as we usually do. An Egyptian Muslim cabbie tries to stab a banker in the neck. How many years do you think he gets? Come on, man. This isn't about politics. Every person in the country knows the answer to that question. You know it in your heart. You know it in your brain. They would, put, they would throw the book at that guy. They'd put him away for a long, long time. And it isn't about the race or it isn't about the ethnicity. It isn't even necessarily about the, the guy's profession as much as it is about the rich versus the rest of us. I'm not anti-rich. I want to be rich. I want all of us to live the American dream. But this isn't fair. This isn't justice. If you get rich, you get a big house, great. You shouldn't get a different justice system. You shouldn't be above the law. But this is the perfect example of how unbelievably unjust our society has become, where they literally have two different sets of laws for the rich and for the rest of us.